What's up all my fish slang friends? It's your boy Fish Hook Terry and in today's video I'm going to talk to you guys about my previous weekend in northern Michigan catching some giant pre-spawn smallmouth. Stay hooked up. Yeah, that's solid, solid fish. Oh my god. Ugh. I am speechless right now. Holy crap. Incorporate that with my previous video on my top five picks for spring smallmouth lures. I'll tell you guys what lures worked, what didn't work in Northern Michigan, and I'll show you some fish catches sprinkled in between. And if you stay tuned to the very end, I'm still really jacked up about this. I catch my new PB smallmouth. Again, guys, it was incredible. I'll show you that fish at the end, so stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. You've got to see that fish. It's a beast. If you're fishing for pre-spawn and spawning smallmouth bass in your neck of the woods, you're going to want to watch this video. I'm going to tell you guys what lures work for me in northern Michigan, help you guys put something together, make you more successful on your next fishing trip for those big smallies. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate every single one of you who subscribes, who hits that notification button, and who keeps coming back to my videos. You guys rock. I hope you're one of those new subscribers so again hit that subscribe button and I hope you like this video and give it a big thumbs up too let's get into the video let's talk about what worked in northern Michigan what I had my success on and show you guys some fish catches mixed in between now last weekend in northern Michigan was beautiful it was a perfect weekend it's been raining a lot I know a lot of you guys all across the country have been dealing with terrible weather so northern Michigan last weekend was just beautiful we finally had mid 60s on both Saturday and Sunday it was a lot of Sun little clouds it was just a perfect time to be out on the water now I have fished this lake many years ago so it started to bring back memories of what worked the previous time I was out there. This lake is pretty small. It's real deep, it's crystal clear, and there's very little cover on this lake. Most of it is sandy bottoms. You've got most transition areas anywhere between upwards of 20 to 10 feet, a lot of areas 15 to 10 feet range, and then you've got these shallow areas. And once I got out on the lake and I could use my costas and really kind of start picking stuff apart, I could see that fish were starting already to move up. And what I had heard was this lake just about a week and a half, two weeks ago, still had ice on it. The water was real cold. I'm gonna guess in the high 40s, I didn't have a way to check the temp, but just putting my hand in it, it was still really, really ice cold. But because now these fish are finally unfrozen, you could see them already making their way to the shallows and that real sunny, nice weather over the weekend helped with that. Once things warmed up through the day, those fish were really starting to push up and get to those real shallow areas, starting to find those old beds, make new beds, and get into that spawn of the year. We were fishing out of an old John boat. So boat control is not even existent. You've got just a trolling motor. My father-in-law was nice enough to run the motor so I could be at the front of the boat and kind of scope things out and really start fishing. And I'm standing in the front of the boat. I can really see because it's so clear. I'm, I'm looking into water that I can see the bottom in 15 and 20 foot with my costas. So one, I'm dealing with lion shy fish. I'm dealing with, with fish that are really cold still. But I, again, I can see where they're trying to transition, where they're going. And that really helped me put together what I wanted to throw and what I wanted to start out with. For me, when I see bright bluebird skies, real sunny days, I want a translucent lure. I want something that's not gonna be overpowering in these conditions, and with it being real crystal gin clear water, again, I want something natural and translucent to help with that sunlight coming in the water. And the first lure I tied on was this guy right here. This is a Duo Realis. This is a 120 size jerk bait. As you can see, it's got that very translucent body. 
Again, it's very natural once it's in the water, but this is a, a larger style jerk bait, and it only dives to mid-level depths, maybe five and six feet, depending on the line. But the, where those fish were, and I started fishing with this, I could tell I wasn't reaching the level where those fish were actually staging. Because, again, they were moving up to shallow water, but where they were really starting to bite was anywhere in between the eight to 12 foot of water range. So this lure, even though it was good in terms of the color, I wasn't getting any bites. And this is where I started. So once I figured out that it wasn't getting to the depth I wanted it to, I switched to another jerk bait that just came out here in 2019. This is the Mega Bass Vision 110 Plus 2. If you can see, how long that bill is. Super long bill. This lure is meant to dive to a level of up to 10 to 12 feet on the right line. So I knew those fish were in that spot. Obviously you can see this is a very translucent lure. This is in the perch pattern. And being in Northern Michigan, being a Michigander, lakes have perch on them here in the Great Lakes. So I knew this was gonna work great. I got the translucent, I've got a very natural color, kind of matching the hatch on something that those fish are normally going to see. I put this on and just got to work on them. Here's another one. this time she smoked it all right Baby smallmouth. Here we go. Feels like I have a pike, but just a good size largemouth. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> Easy, big fella. Okay, I got it. <sighs> Four, six, seven. All right, girl. There we go. Big, nice, large mouth. 4.67 on the scale. See you, girl. Bye bye. Here's another one. Good large mouth. Sure, net this one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good large mouth. <sighs> okay. I got her. Oh, it's another solid fish. Wow. 4.38. Just a little smaller than the last one. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a good one right there.
Ah, another four pounder. That belly. Oh yeah. All right, girl. Go back home. Uh, see ya. Of course, I didn't. Here's one. There we go. Smally. Feels like a real good one. Stay down. Oh, baby. Stay hooked up. Yeah. <laughs> That's a solid, solid fish. Now the Vision 110 plus two has got this real long bill on it and I knew this could get down to where those fish were staging and get those bites. And I know if you watch my previous video, I talk a lot about jerk baits and you don't have to do a mega bass to get a really good jerk bait that gets bit. And there's other deep diving jerk baits out on the market. You don't have to go with a plus two, one of these $25 jerk baits. But, but I will say out of my experience with deep diving jerk baits, some of the others out there, my opinion, they do not have the action like this lure. With trying it out this weekend and really being able to notice it, watching it as I'm retrieving it back to the boat, this Vision 110 Plus 2 for me worked just like an original 110 where on a jerk bait, it's key to have very erratic snapping actions. Let that lure dart side to side. And even though this is a deep diver, it was still accomplishing the real hard dart side to side. And with the water temperatures and the perfect balance of this lure, when you killed it, when you, when you ripped it and stopped, this lure suspended perfectly. It did not move, it did not float or sink. When you ripped it and stopped, it stayed right there. That was the key to getting this bit. What made this Vision 110 Plus 2 so deadly was the way that it was able to just hold that position, really suspend, and I'm working in normal cadence. I'd pop twice, rip, rip, I'd pause it, maybe five seconds, I'd rip it again once. I'd wait five seconds, I'd rip it again twice, pop, pop, and with it sitting there waiting for that fish and getting their attention, it was able to just get smoked. Always on the pause of when I would get bit. So I would do my rips, I'd let it wait, I'd rip it again, and when I would rip it, then you would feel either a large mouth, just hold on to it, you've got that weight, or in terms of some of the small mouth I'd catch, you'd do that rip, you'd pause, you'd hit it again, and as soon as you started that next rip, they would just slam it like a ton of bricks like smallmouth do. Now, as we were going, I could actually see in real shallow water some good sized fish and they were actually grouped together with it being so warm and nice over the weekend. But my father-in-law and I, we tried everything to catch these fish from drop shots to Ned rigs. I fished my motion fishing jig, the all ghost color, and I did get a few bites on it but I could never get them to connect. They were really like mush mouth. They weren't really committing to the jig. So you'd set the hook and they were just gone. But anything else, the Ned rigs, the drop shots wouldn't work. They didn't look at them, they scattered. And again, we backed off from these spots to make it so we weren't spooking the fish or scaring the fish away with, it, with them being in such shallow water and clear water and we just could not get any bites. So we kept backing out to that deeper water and again, the jerk bait, that deep diving Mega Bass Vision 110 Plus 2 just killed it for me. Every fish I got into the boat on this past weekend was on that jerk bait. And if you can tell from this jerk bait, these, some of these hooks are mangled. I had to bend some of them back in place. You can see the, the back of this lure. It's got teeth marks and stuff all over it. It was just the tasty perch minnow that they wanted. It was in their strike zone and they just crushed it. For my personal best smallmouth, 
I'm kicking myself over this. Now, we at this point have been fishing all morning. My battery on my GoPro is almost dead, and I've been filming so much that my memory on my card is almost dead as well. I think we're about to go in for lunch, so I've got my GoPro shut off like a dummy, and we're still fishing, and I cast up to this super shallow water, and I'm working that Vision 110 Plus 2 back to the boat, and I get slammed. I mean, it's like a freight train. And at this point, I didn't really realize that I had the camera off. But I'm fighting this fish, and about 30 feet out, I actually see this fish like turn sideways to me, and I see how large this fish is. And I'm already thinking to myself like, okay, this is a good one. And I'm, as I'm reeling this fish in, I've got the rod bent over, and I'm just, freaking at this point. I'm like, okay, this is a big one. I know it's a big one. I need to get him into the boat. And I can tell I've got him hooked pretty well. So I'm, I'm not worried that way, but I want to get this fish into the boat. So I'm getting the fish closer to the boat and my father-in-law reaches out with the net and the fish of course sees it, starts to take off and he hits the net, the edge of the net. And I'm like, oh gosh, like please don't knock this fish off. I'm freaking at this point. I'm trying to hold the rod and pick up any slack so my father-in-law can get the fish. Here he comes, he scoops him one more time, gets the fish into the net, and of course, like always, as soon as he gets him in the net, there go the hooks. The lure is free, the fish is free. So just about to freak that if I would have lost that fish, I would have died, for real. It would have been crazy. But I get the fish in the boat, I'm at this point just, oh my God, like for sure I know this is my new personal best smallmouth. I've caught a lot of five pounders. I've never been able to break the five pound mark. And I get this fish, I finally get them. I, I know now that, okay, the camera's off. I feel like an idiot. So I, I turn the camera on long enough. What you'll see of me showing the fish and putting them back in the water, it was a surreal experience. I'll never forget it until I get my next personal best, Smalley. All right, guys, I am freaking out. Didn't have the camera on, almost done with battery, and caught this six plus pounder. I don't know exactly. My Boga grip say she's six but I think she's bigger. This thing is a monster smallmouth on a jerk bait on that Vision 110 Plus 2. This is a beast. I gotta get her back in the water and I'm freaking kicking myself I didn't have the dang camera on. But let's let her go. Oh my God. Ugh. I am speechless right now. Holy crap. What a smallmouth. By far, my PB smallmouth right there. I'm, again, I'm ticked I didn't have the camera on, but I am absolutely pumped. Worth the trip right there to catch that fish. Woo! Awesome, awesome, awesome. Again, you can tell I'm jacked up now, just reliving the moment. It was awesome. And again, fishing it with a jerk bait out of some old John boat, which doesn't make jerk bait fishing that great, doing like different angles and such, so you're not hitting the boat, uh, but it was awesome. I'm glad it made the trip all worthwhile. I'm super pumped I went, I'm super pumped I got at least some footage of the fish in hand, like hey, that's what I got. I really hope you liked this video and checking out those fish catches and what worked in Northern Michigan. If you liked it, please give this video a big thumbs up. Again, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It means the world to me when you guys support this channel. So thank you so much. Again, my name is Fish Hook Terry. To all you fish slayers out there, thanks again. Tight lines, guys. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.